So everybody's used to seeing me, but for this topic, I can't go alone. I need some help. So I've recruited a little bit of help here. Um, they're clearly in their school clothes, which is great because we're learning, so that's a good thing. So what I wanna talk a little bit about now is Poisson regression. So if you've caught this in the notes, you may recognize that it is for count-based models. So anytime that you have an outcome variable that is expressed as a count, some kind of rate account, um, this Poisson model would be really good to use. So I'm gonna have my helpers here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to define a time, right? We're gonna call this 15 seconds, just so nobody gets too worn out. And what I have here is some pretty massive weight. Uh, it's got two, two and a half pound plates on it. The bar is about two and a half pounds. So roughly seven and a half pounds. And we're gonna see how many times my faithful helpers here can curl this weight in 15 seconds. That's a fake cough. He doesn't really have Corona. Don't worry about it. So I'm going to give this weight to this little one here and he's going to try to curl it. He's going to use both hands and that's okay. So I'm going to give him 15 seconds. Go. We'll see how many he can do. How many curls can you do? Let's see. So let's try. There's one. All right. Oh, two and three. And that was a beautiful move. Okay, there's about 15 seconds. So let's call that three. So in our 15 second time period, this little one got three curls or something like that. Now we're gonna move on to this one. All right, so step out of the way. Let's see, how many curls can this one get? In 15 seconds, starting in three, two, one, go. There's one, two, three, four, five, Six. Oh, the bird is coming. Oh, seven, eight. Okay, so eight. All right. Now the oldest one here. Let's see. Let's give her a count on three, two, one. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and 10. Excellent. Pretty much 10. Okay. So what we would do here, that's our outcome variable, the number of reps each of these helpers got. Um, so what would we maybe be able to use to predict how many reps they got? We could look at them and say maybe something like bicep size or age or height or body rate, right? Whoa, everybody settle down over there. So we could use one of those things as predictors. Let's call it uh, bicep size for now, right? So maybe we could use bicep. <laughs> maybe we could use bicep size as a as a reasonable predictor of how many reps could be gotten. But let's try something. You may, as have you as you have worked down through those notes a little bit, maybe caught that there's an extension to the Poisson model. And that extension is called zero inflated Poisson or zip. So the zero inflated Poisson gets a little bit different. It does something kind of interesting because anytime we're dealing with a count based variable, the chance of us having a zero can be good. Zeros are very possible when we're dealing with counts. And when we have zeros, it sure would be nice to know if there's something causing those zeros. We can model our count process. That's great. We can model that in the Poisson model, but a bunch of zeros, it's gonna be nice to know if there's something else causing those zeros. So we used this, this weight before, and again, remember that predictor was body weight, uh, no, bicep size before. So we're, we're gonna keep rocking in that bicep size. So uh, we'll do those later, okay? So we have a little bit more substantial weight here, two 10 pound plates, and uh, so let's call that 22 and a half pounds. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see how many times this little one can curl 22 and a half pounds in our 15 seconds. Ready? Got it? Let's see it. Oh, uh, go. Got it? Yes. Got it? Okay, I'll let go. Ah. Zero, right? So probably zero times there. So in our 15, in our 15 seconds, got zero reps, right? So that would go in as a zero in that row, All right? So we have some other information about this, this person, bicep size, age, weight, things like that. So let's try it with this middle one, right? Let's see what we got here. 
Let's see how many he can maybe pull off, how many good curls he can do. And we'll let him go in two, one, go. Oh, <laughs> also zero, don't jerk, you're gonna hurt yourself. So also zero there. So we have two uh, rows there with zero values. And then finally a third one, let's see. We're gonna give you three, two, one. No, you may use one hand, go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, all right. So there is another zero, all right? So if I were doing this right, no problem, that's, that's fine. So what would cause those zeros? We may be keenly interested to know. So these zero inflated Poisson models are two models in one, which is pretty awesome. First, you have your Poisson model. That's going to help predict for that count and explain the count. The second component of that is really just a logistic regression. So we're going to predict, is it a zero or not? What process can account for a zero or not a zero? So here, if we look at this, we see me and our three helper students here, and we probably have something that's very much related to body weight. Probably what's driving those zeros is very likely going to be attributed to body weight, which just makes sense, right? That's, uh, that's these, these kids aren't going to be able to curl uh, that much weight given their body weight. So that would account for the zeros there. So those zeros are going to kind of get wacky with our count process. So we need a way to see if there's something else that made them happen. So if you get into a variable that you think could be a count-based variable, whether it's the number of times something has broken down, the number of visitors that come to your site, make sure that it's a Poisson model. Then if you explore that variable a little bit and determine that it's got some zeros and maybe it's got more than just a few zeros, right? If you have a good uh, chunk of zeros, then it may be worth exploring that zero inflated model because that's going to tell you if there's something there that could be additionally driving or causing those zeros. So I will bid a farewell to my uh, excellent student helpers here and I'll catch you all later on.